Hello everybody, Jose here for WPBasics.org with another video tutorial. In today's tutorial we will cover how to copy your site that you've developed locally on your local host and move it to your live server so that uh, everybody can see the site that you've been working so hard on. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, have a look here at our site. And this is a site that I developed for a client recently. It's a church site and uh, I'm going to test it out on this one. We're going to load it up to this website. So the first thing we need to do is go to into our dashboard here and uh, download a plugin uh, called Duplicator. I already have mine installed, but if you don't, go ahead and do that. The plugin is by Life in the Grid. Make sure you get that one. Once you have it installed, click on this button that says Duplicator. Now what we want to do here is click on this button that says create new so go ahead and do that. Now what it'll do is it'll give you a default name for the file. You can change that name if you like. I usually leave it as it is. You can even put notes if, it, if that's something you needed to do. I usually don't but you could if you wanted to. You would just click on this button here and put your notes right here where it says notes. I don't do that but you can if you want. And then these other drop down menus for storage. I leave those alone. You really don't need to touch them. Just leave them alone. You can look at them if you want, but I tend to leave them as it is. What we do next is on the bottom right hand corner, there's a Bible, a, a button labeled next. Go ahead and click on that button. And it's going to start scanning to build our package. So it's the scan has been completed. Everything looks good here. And um, so we're ready to build. And let's just click on this button at the bottom center that says build. Go ahead and click on that button. So I'm just going to pause it here while it builds the packages for me. So we, here we have it. Two files have been created. One is called installer and one is called archive. We need to download both of these to somewhere that is easy to find. So just go ahead and click on installer. And uh, I'm going to download it to my desktop. I have a file there called YouTube video, the, just so it's easy to, for me to know. Um, that it's there. I'm going to name it. Let me just take that number out. Installer PHP. Save. That's saved. And then, then go ahead and click on the other button called Archive and uh, download that one also. Now, this one, don't rename it, leave it as is. And it's going to pause it while it downloads that. So once those files have been downloaded, now we can go to our, there's two ways to upload the file. We are going to do it. I'll show you both ways and you can decide which way you want to do it. The first way to do it is to use your cPanel. So you just go to your site and look for your file manager on your cPanel. Mine is right here. So just go ahead and click on that. And then just navigate to the folder that you want to install it. I have a number of, uh, sites on mine. So you go to public HTML and then I'm going to put it in uh, IMS Woodbridge. And as you can see right now, it's empty. Now what you could do, you can just click upload and upload your files as is. And that, that, that would be the end of that step. The other option is to do this by uh, using um, FileZilla. So if you wanted to use FileZilla, you would just go into your FileZilla that's here. And then you would navigate here from your desktop to your uh, where is it? YouTube videos folder. Let me just find that. Give me one second. Give me one second. Like so let me just scroll down here. Here we go. YouTube videos. Open that up. And there you have your two folders. So just select both of them and drag it over here to your FTP and drop it in there. Before you do that, actually, make sure your peer is selected on the proper folder where you want it to go. We want it to go in IMS Woodbridge. So uh, you select your domain there, drag it over, drop it in there. That shouldn't take very long. And it's going to pause it while it does that. So here we have it. We have our files uploaded and uh, ready to uh, be installed. But before we do that, we actually have to go back to our server. And we need that. The first thing we need to do is is go there. So let's do that. Let's go back here. Let's move back. So what we want to do is go to my SQL databases. So my SQL. QL. So here we go. My SQL databases. That's where you want to go. So click on that. 
It's just going to take a second there. So then you'll be brought to a page, something like this. Your host may be different. And then it just basically says here to uh, create a database. You would press this button, but first we want to put some kind of name there. Um, so let's write just something. You wouldn't write something like this, but I'm just going to write it like this. Just, uh, let's see, YouTube video. I'll just call it YouTube video. You can call it whatever you want. It's gonna. It's creating that database now. It's just selected it and let's go back. So we have the the database created now. We can see that. The next thing we gotta do is create a new user. So you scroll down on that same page and then you'll come to a page that says MySQL users and you just add uh, something here. Just call it uh, whatever you want to call it. Let's just put it YouTube user. Oh, it's limiting me to just that. So let's just do that. And we've got to put in a password. Uh, just for, for this test, I'm just going to put something simple. You would never do this for real. You would actually put a, a very strong password, but this is just a test. And anybody's hacking it, uh, by the time this video is live, I'm going to delete all this. So don't even bother trying to hack this site. It'll be gone. So, but I'm just doing it for, uh, for demonstration purposes. Then you create the user. Well, it's going to, okay, I have to do it longer. So user one, if you do one. Okay, so that's created successfully. So the next thing you have to do is you have to add a user to that database. So scroll for a section where it says something to the effect of add a user to a database and select the database we created and also select the user we created here. So here's the database. Here's the user. Click add. And then here it's going to prompt us what privileges do we want to give this user? Well, we want to give them all privileges or else they're not going to be able to do anything, right? So give them all privileges and click make changes. And it's doing that now. So that's been successfully done. And then from here, we just got to go to a, a new tab. And then we're going to go to www, whatever your domain name is, mine happens to be IMS uh, Woodbridge.org. And then put, uh, we'll just type that for now. You're going to get something like this that tells you the two files that we uploaded there. You can you can easily click on just installer.php or we can put do it this way slash installer.php. Uh, let me just shrink this down so you can see it better. There, you just type it in there and then hit enter. And it's going to bring you to a page like this. So what we want to do here, leave it where it says create a new database and your host should be local host. If it's not, that's going to be pretty odd. And so what you'd have to do then is uh, contact your uh, host provider and ask them to see what the host name is. But most of them should be uh, local host. So what we want to do now is fill in these uh, fields here. So right here we have the name. Um, that's the name of the database we created. Okay, so just to put that in there, I would actually, when we create it there, when you create yours, I would actually recommend that uh, you copy it somewhere, then you can just paste it in after. And then the username, that's the username we created also. And then the password, what was my password? I think it was root one. I think so. Test connection. Everything looks good. And then... We just see that that's good. Scroll down, click on this button here. That says you've read, you've read all the uh, warnings and notices and then click on run deployment. Say OK. And let's let it load. And bam, here we go. We have this. So this is basically telling us what the old settings were. This is from our local host. This is our web uh, name. This is what our new URL is going to be woodbridge.org, which is correct. And this is the path and so on and so forth. Here's the title. Um, the rest, you can just leave it alone. Hit run update at the bottom right hand corner. Go ahead and click on that button and we're on our way. So I'm just going to pause it for a second while it does that. 
Actually, I don't need to pause it. It did it actually pretty quickly. So it's that easy, folks. It's We're almost done. Oh, the only thing we want to do right now, because I'm anxious to see if it actually worked, is click on test site. And there seems to be a problem. So let me see what's going on with that. So I get right here, we can see that the HT access file was reset. So I get a feeling there's something that's happening there. So let's hit save permalinks. And maybe we have to reset the permalinks. It's just actually just save it. Go in here and save them. Okay. So let's and then uh, that should hopefully do it. Let's test site now. And we're still having that same problem. So okay, let's let me put it on pause while I figure this out. So that's actually should do it. Uh, what it actually is that when I clicked save permalinks. It just takes some time. So if we go to test site now, it should be fine. So there we go. So there we have it. So basically what happened here is uh, it's not as fast as doing it to the local host. You actually have to save the permalinks because your HT access file got re reset. It's, it's different than the one on your local site, local host. Um, so just go ahead, save permalinks give it a couple seconds for the server to uh, realize that that's happened. And then you can hit test site. And as you can see here, it, it's fine. It's up and running. Everything's looking good. And it's that it's quite easy like that. Um, so the only th thing we have to do now is actually for, for sure, you have to go into security cleanup. What we have to do here is remove those two files that we uploaded, because if you leave those, you leave yourself open to hacking. So click, uh, let's uh, delete reserved files. Let's do that. Uh, I just click on all these delete legacy files, say okay. And then the clear build cache, just why not? Let's click, go ahead and click on that one as well. And what I wanna do now is actually go to our uh, go to our FTP file. So let me just do that. So here we go. So what I want to do is you can just go ahead and click on refresh to, to reload the files. What we want to do is we want to make sure that that installer file is no longer here. And that is gone. But I would also remove this zip file, we don't need it. And you have a, a copied on your desk, on your desktop. So you don't really need that there. So I would delete that. Say yes. And let's just go back to our deleting status. Give it a second while it does that. Okay, it's gonna give it a second while it does that. So once it, once it's done there, I'm just gonna go back to the web page. Make sure it's it's uh, totally good. Uh, let's just click this done. Go here. Actually, let's just do it this way. View site. And there you have it. It's that easy, folks. We just ran into a little hiccup, but that was just because I was being impatient. But uh, other than that, it works perfectly well. There's your site. It's all up and running. It's that easy. It's pretty much the same as downloading it to your local host, just with a couple little changes. Really, it, in procedure-wise, it's exactly the same. It's just you do it a little different because you're on a server. That's it. In any case, hope you like this video. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, uh, shoot me a comment below. Thanks and have a good day. Bye-bye.